So let's talk about in this video, 10 signs that you are becoming more securely attached or are already securely attached. So these are 10 major functions of understanding where a securely attached person may end up and what life might look like as a securely attached person or how to really validate if you're on your way there. So number one, one of the first things I'll see, especially if somebody's coming from insecure attachment, is that they get triggered with less intensity. Or if you are already an SA, you may find yourself, or a SA, a secure attachment style, um, you may find yourself in a position where you just don't get triggered very intensely very often. And so this form of emotional regulation is a really good indicator if you're not struggling with a lot of inner wounds or past traumas that are coming up for you, or you're not feeling a lot of um, sort of insecurities or fears or anger, you know, this may be a sign that you are more secure. Number two is we don't just experience less trigger intensity, like less of an emotional charge. An example being that something could trigger you 10 out of 10 versus a three out of 10. We don't just in number one have less intensity around our triggers, but we get triggered less frequently. And if you're coming from insecure to securely attached, you may see this happen quite quickly. You may see, for example, that you, um, you know, you used to get triggered maybe on a daily basis. I know when I was a fearful avoidant attachment style, I would literally get triggered pr probably every single day on some level. And then I started trying to think back, like when was the last time that I was triggered and how long has it been? And, you know, maybe it just went from every day to like once a week, but then it went to a couple times a month and it really just spaced out over time more and more. It doesn't mean that you'll never get triggered in your life once you're secure. It just means that it's much less substantial and much less intense and much less, of course, frequent. Number three is um, you may find yourself having a greater capacity to communicate needs. So you may be able to understand your needs better and then also communicate or share them with other people more effectively. And this will create a really positive effect, um, not just on how you feel about yourself and your own life, because you're actually living a life with the intention of here's what fills my cup, here's what makes me happy. Let me go out and action that in the world. But also the more you communicate openly with other people um, and share those needs with others, the more you will feel seen and understood and the greater capacity you have for your needs to be met because people actually know what they are. So this improves not just the quality of your life, but also of your relationships. Number four is having more empathy and validation of people, even when they have opposing needs or opposing views. So I'd almost say like empathy and tolerance here. Because what you'll see as a general rule is that maybe if somebody had a difference of opinion in the past, you would take it personally, or you would think that the person thinks something negatively about you because you have a difference of opinion, or you might feel this need to fight over your opinions or hold on to them. Whereas as you become more and more secure, you start realizing everybody's kind of different and they have different opinions for different reasons. We're conditioned differently. We get programmed differently by our world, our culture, our environment, our childhood, our upbringing, and it's okay for people to have different views. It's okay for people to have different needs. And I can see where they're coming from according to who they are. And we don't get into this trap of thinking this person should be this way because I expect them to. So we just have more empathy, more bandwidth, and also, especially in the case of people from opposing viewpoints. And this doesn't mean, just like I talked about earlier with the triggering, it doesn't mean you're perfect at this. You don't turn into a perfect robot overnight, but as you become more and more secure, if you are already secure, you naturally probably notice that you just have more room for that. Our next one, number five, is your boundaries will improve. We might think that like as a dismissive avoidant becoming more secure, for example, that their boundaries should go down. But in fact, DAs even will become better at enforcing their boundaries in healthy ways, but also making compromises at the same time. Those don't, even though they may sound like different things, they're not actually mutually exclusive. In other words, a dismissive avoidant, usually what you'll see as an example is with boundaries, they set one big boundary. You know, they say, I'm not coming over on Friday because they're tired. Instead of saying, hey, I'm going to come over on Friday, but I might leave a little early. And then when the time comes, they leave early and they set that boundary. And because they feel better equipped to set boundaries healthily and in real time, it actually allows them to have more room and bandwidth to operate in their relationships. And of course, the more obvious examples are for anxious or fearful avoidance. We'll see that they tend to get into a dynamic where they um, you know, actually set boundaries more effectively from people who tend to really struggle with that as anxious and fearful avoidant attachment styles. Number six, we see healthy interdependency. 
I find that more anxious leaning styles tend to be very codependent and more avoidant leaning styles tend to be very counter dependent or hyper independent. And what we're actually looking for is the mix of both. So we'll see as they come down the continuum, anxious become more self-reliant. They become more able to meet their own needs, to soothe themselves, to really develop a relationship to themselves. And then that balances them out into their interdependent nature. And dismissive avoidance become more vulnerable, more open to relying on others, more open to um, communicating their feelings and sharing with people and letting people in. And that moves them down the continuum of being more in interdependent rather than hyper-independent. Um, number seven, vulnerability happens more effectively. This might sound funny, but anxious preoccupied are sometimes not the most vulnerable. They can seem vulnerable in the way that they're processing their own feelings or feeling so much, but true vulnerability means dropping our mask. It means opening up, letting people in, letting people see us with our fears and flaws instead of just people pleasing all the time. And then our DA version of, of lacking vulnerability is more obvious, right? The not letting people in and keeping guarded all the time in a more sort of overt way. Um, but both attachment styles on either continuum, and of course, our, our fearful avoidant or disorganized attachment all need to do the work to come into, you know, this healthy relationship with their own vulnerability and to be able to express it. Number eight, we have acceptance and compromise. Um, part of making it through the, the power struggle stage of relationships is being able to accept somebody as they are for who they are. It doesn't mean we don't communicate our needs or communicate if something makes us feel bad in a relationship, but we don't constantly get into this place where we're projecting expectations onto people. We instead understand people are unique and we're working to communicate and share and open up and let people in and through that acceptance and compromise, right? Because we also want to do that from our side um, through making compromises and having more flexibility as well. We empower relationship dynamics to thrive. And number nine, we have trust. We learn to actually trust. So much of trust has to do with us building proper self-trust. Um, maybe I'll talk about that in another video, but sometimes we can violate our own self-trust or betray ourselves. And that can actually move us away from being securely attached. But if we come empowered with our boundaries, with communication, that can actually help our relationships to continuously build momentum. And then last but not least, number 10 is nervous system regulation. And we may feel as a result of better nervous system regulation, coming into harmony with our needs and being less triggered and having better boundaries and all these different things that we're doing, we'll actually feel like we can be more present and attuned to our senses, to our environment and more relaxed, right? It doesn't mean that we're, we can't be on or, you know, be empowered and focus and do all these great things, but we may just feel more at home within ourselves. So these are 10 really important signs to pay attention to. I hope you enjoyed this video or 10 signs somebody is already securely attached, of course. Um, and if you have more questions for me, please let me know in the comments down below. And also please like, share, and subscribe to this video if you are enjoying this um, channel. And please consider hitting the thumbs up button or the notification bell so you do not miss any episodes. Thank you so much for watching.